Hi, I'm Dewey Hollister, the Executive Director of the St. George Village Botanical Garden, the Botanical Garden of the Virgin Islands. And today I'd like to do a special video in honor of Earth Day. Earth Day began in 1970 as a way to educate everyone on the dangers our planet faces and things that we can do. In the last so many years, it's very much been uh, talking about climate change and how we can help with that. And I want to talk about that today. Here in the Botanical Garden, we have many examples of trees that are used for reforestation. So after an area is cleared of its native trees, it's always good if you can possibly put a forest back. But you need something that's going to grow quickly and yet allow other trees to grow up under it so that your native plants can return, even if you're not using a native tree to reforest. The tree that's behind me right now is Saman. Saman is a very large growing tree. This particular specimen ended up losing some of its branch tips in Hurricane Maria a couple years ago, but uh, it shows the beautiful vase-shaped form. It's a fast-growing tree from Venezuela and northern South America. It was brought to this island initially for cattle shade. I mean, you think about it, St. Croix is a very long history of, uh, of sugarcane production. Most of the forests were cut long ago. So when the sugarcane was giving out and cattle coming in, you ended up having a situation where you needed shade. This tree was brought in, and interestingly, the pods of this tree taste something like licorice, and the cattle will actually eat that and spread the seeds around so the more cattle you have, the more saman or rain trees that you have. You may notice that the leaves are starting to fold up since we're getting late in the day. They do go to sleep at night, and that allows the rain and the dew to come right through the tree, hence giving it the name rain tree. But those will fully open again tomorrow morning. So this tree has, is, has a long history on the island. It's an excellent reforesting tree. Never too dense. Other plants will grow up underneath it. It will seed itself, but it's not a terrible pest. And here in the botanical garden, that's one of the things that we experiment with. We would never want to introduce a tree on the island that would itself become an invasive pest, a plant that would dislodge native plants or exclude them. So let's move to our next tree and I'll talk about it. Okay, we're in our next tree right now. The tree behind me is what we refer to as tan-tan on the island. It also goes by the name of horse tamarind because if horses eat too many leaves off of this species, they start losing their manes and their tails. Uh, this tree was brought in originally to this island as cattle forage. Cattle can eat it much, even much uh, safer than horses can. Uh, and it's a shorter growing variety of this species than is out there in the world. The typical species is a little taller than this. But this one gives a good idea of how tall this plant will grow. And you can see the seed pods on it. This has a checkered history as far as a reforesting species. It's wild all over the island now, though it's originally from Central America. And as such, it's not a plant that I would want to introduce in a place because it has the ability to just take over an area. Its seeds will last seven to 10 years in the soil and still grow. So it's an invasive species that's very difficult to eradicate. On the plus side, however, the areas on the island that are heavy with this plant, it actually is a very good nurse tree for native species to come up and grow underneath. This tree, like the tree we just saw, is a member of the bean family. That family is renowned for its ability to take the atmospheric nitrogen that's around us and turn it into nitrogen fertilizer in the soil. Those trees make extra fertilizer beyond what they need, and that helps other plants to grow so they can really improve bad or degraded soils. They also have just the right amount of shade, as did the Samoan that we saw before, that doesn't shade out new seedlings in other young trees. It allows them to grow safely underneath, keeping them out of the intense killing sunlight that could otherwise dry them out in a drought. So this has its, its benefits. Our problem on this island really is we don't have enough native trees all over the place to seed under all the tan tan we have. The native trees were cut down a long time ago and live in small areas now on the island, often too far away to go get to the tan tans. This is one of the goals also of our Virgin Island Rare Plant Initiative a program, the Verpi that was we call it, that's here at the garden. 
and that program seeks to grow native trees and disseminate them so that they are all over the island and hence will be able to seed themselves into the Tantan in the future. But now let me show you another tree that has a, a bit of a checkered history. Hi, well now we've reached our next place in the garden. This is also a good place for me to point out some of the unique things about the botanical garden here. We are built around the remains of an old sugar plantation. You can see some of those ruins behind me. Uh, it makes our garden, I think, very unique in the world. But also behind me, you'll see the beautiful orange flowers of the African tulip tree. And off to the right of it and are smaller, you can see young African tulip trees starting to grow uh, near the ruins. But the African tulip tree has a checkered history as far as a reforestation species. First of all, it, it does not like dry. So for our island, it only really works for the eastern, I'm sorry, for the western half of the island. Our eastern half is so dry that it's difficult for it to grow. Here in the west, it's a wonderful tree. And on our island, we still, even in the west, have enough periods of drought that this tree really doesn't take over our forest. It grows, it can seed itself and make new trees, but it doesn't become terrifically invasive. The island of Puerto Rico is an example, a much moister island. It can become a very undesirable invasive species. Here, again, has the wonderful qualities of not too dense a shade, as you can see there. Plants will grow up underneath it. It's a short-lived tree, so our longer-lived natives will grow up underneath it and replace it over time. Those are all things you want from a reforestation species. But again, you have to be very careful about where you're planting a species that is not native because it may do good things like promote quick growth, but it may do bad things and become overly invasive. So here on this island, African tulip is perfectly safe. It's just a problem growing it in some of our drier areas. The Samam we saw in the very beginning, it can take more dry, but it still can't go all the way to the far eastern end of this island where it's very, very dry. The Tan Tan that we just saw can grow everywhere on the island, and it does. Let's go to a new tree that we are introducing to the island, uh, and we're experimenting with it now to make sure it's safe to introduce. So I'll show you that next. All right, now we're at our next tree that I want to show you. And this one we are experimenting with to see how dry this plant will grow. Unfortunately, it does tend to like a bit more moisture. This is a trumpet tree, Cecropia, and you can see the unique growth habit that it has. It grows almost like a candelabra in very open tiers. Again, like the last tree we saw, this one makes beautiful shade that helps everything grow underneath it. Now this tree is native to the island, and it grows typically in the far northwest of the island where it's the wettest. We're trying to experiment with this and see how dry it can grow, and we're not quite sure yet. We have it growing about the middle of the island to a little bit east of that. We're not sure how far we can go with it. It's a very fast growing tree. This one was a little seedling, maybe uh, not even chest high three years ago. You can see now we're probably getting up to 25, 30 feet. And uh, these trees are also known as Cecropias. Uh, Cecropia trees are male or female, and you need to have one of each in order to make seed. But this is exactly what this tree is meant to do as far as reforestation. In a native forest situation, when an opening in the forest occurs because there was a hurricane or an old tree dies and makes an opening in the forest, Cecropias, whose seeds may be sitting in the soil for 50 years or 100 years, they germinate and quickly grow and plug that hole in the forest. And when they do so, all the native things come up underneath them. And of course, we can of course make that happen faster by planting uh, more natives underneath them once we plant this to get started. But you have to think about the characteristics of the climate here in the Caribbean. It's windy with our trade winds. The sun is brutal. So if you have an open space, a plant that may be perfectly fine growing here can't survive out in the open initially. It needs something to protect it a little bit to get it started. And a tree like this is ideal. So we are hoping that we can extend the range of this species on the island. And it's native here, so there's no way that it will escape and cause a problem in the native forest here. Now I want to show you a brand new tree to the island. This is our final tree that I'm going to talk about. So here, typical of a botanical garden, is a tree we are experimenting with right now. This tree is not native to our island, but it is native to South America. 
The sky's lobium tree, sometimes called the fern tree, uh, really looks like a palm. And if you take a look up here, you'll see the beautiful green bark that it has, which it keeps into old age, and this wonderful crown of leaves that really looks like a palm or a tree fern. This is actually in the bean family. When it blooms with its yellow flowers for the first time, it'll then branch, and then it'll branch again and branch again. These can be quite large trees. Nobody's ever tried them on the island, and we had had a beautiful uh, group of royal palms in this area, and after the hurricane destroyed them, I wanted to keep their palm look, but yet do something that was going to be a little more substantial as far as what we give back to the island. So the idea of a reforestation species came to mind. I knew about this tree from uh, my, my visits in Brazil, and it is a striking tree as well as fast growing and tough. I didn't know if it was tough enough to take our dry seasons. So far, this has done very well. This tree is about three years old, and uh, you can see it has grown quite rapidly. And I'm very excited about it. Let me give you a bit of a look at how long that leaf is. This is a single leaf stem that you can see here. I mean, it's almost my height, the length of it. And so that's one leaf. And it's quite amazingly sticky when they're young. I was surprised about that. I wasn't expecting it. Apparently the stickiness helps insect pests not be able to live on the tree. It simply glues them down. That, that was very much a surprise. We have to wait for this tree to bloom. We have to wait for it to go through several bloom cycles to make sure that it's not going to be overly fertile and cause a problem being an invasive species. Again, being in the bean family has the ability to put nitrogen in the soil here. It has the ability to make that wonderful shade that makes things grow well, and it, it could well assist our efforts for reforestation for this island. A lot more experimentation to do, and a lot more trees I could show you, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what it takes to actually do reforestation, and of course how important reforestation is. So at this point I want to wish you a happy Earth Day, and I also want to say I'm looking forward to seeing you again back in the garden.